Welcome to the Daily Transfer Show. I'm your host, Miles. I'm joined here by Pete, and we're very excited to come to you on Deadline Day, one of the first of many shows across the day. And we're going to kick off with some breaking news that Pierre or Emmerich or Bamiang has. Oh, you're messing up again! It's just joined Arsenal, it's just confirmed, finally. I hate you. Uh, finally, it's been confirmed. 55 million, I believe it is. What's his name? Or Pierre Emmerich. <laughs> Or Bamiyang. See, it's right hard right? yeah. Anyway, so Arsenal have just confirmed it. Dortmund have just confirmed it. It's finally done. Yeah. We weren't sure if they were going to get it over the line. Going million by million up, up. Trying to get that bit over Who's the line. done better out of this uh, threesome between Arsenal, Chelsea and Dortmund, do you think? Bashuai on loan, At Giroud Dortmund. or or Arsenal? Arsenal. Arsenal. Obviously what Arsenal. What a great deal for yeah. them. Oh, Bamiyang, one of the best strikers in the world. And I, how else <laughs> do you bounce back from, you know, getting smashed off... Um, Swansea, mm. uh, you know, then signing one of the best forwards in the world. It just kind of tells you how sort of incoherent things are at Arsenal at the minute. You know, mm. they've, they're a really strange club. But Aubameyang, what a signing! Yeah. What a great signing to go along with Mkhitaryan. Yeah. So now they've got, as you were saying earlier on, Lacazette, Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang, and also up front. What does that spell? Laugh my ass off. <laughs> which is which really tickles Pete. It's that a good really one. Like it's that. one of the best. Uh, it's one of the best anagram ones, isn't it? Acronyms. Yeah. Uh, let us know on uh, Facebook if you're watching what your favourite transfer of the uh, so far of the window is in Who, January. Who's on there? Who's Marvin. on there? So the options are no, Sanchez. No, no. Sanchez to Man United, Mkhitaryan to Arsenal, Coutinho to Barcelona, Van Dijk to Liverpool. But we can also add Aubameyang to Arsenal. Definitely, yeah. And it's, uh, for me, it's my favourite transfer. And he's got number 14, which should remind people of that. Great striker that Arsenal had uh, for so many years, Theo Walcott, Theo Walcott <laughs> who scored about 50 goals for them across a decade and a half. Hero, what a club yeah. legend. A yeah. club legend. But they did have uh, somebody else who was excellent uh, in Thierry Henry. Yeah. Uh, another former Monaco player as well, like, uh, like Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Yes. And uh, I think that Aubameyang can, can be, I mean, if Arsenal get their act together elsewhere on the field, mm. can be as effective for Arsenal as Henri was. Where does he come into that team? Does he knock Lacazette like, out? I'd, I'd name him up front and mm-hmm. then kind of give him license to drift. Right, okay. Because when he played under Klopp on the right wing for Dortmund, he was, <laughs> he's not a right winger. And uh, I don't think he's comfortable being named with any sort of defensive responsibility to the left. Mm. So the best place for me to have him is name, name him up top and then just give him license to roam. And uh, I think he'll score loads of goals because he times his run so well and he's a great finisher that Arsenal, for me, have picked up the best strike. I mean, this guy is good enough to play for PSG, for Real Madrid, for you Bayern. You rate him for... over Alexis, don't you? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's top quality. And, and I think, Mkhitaryan said it earlier on in the week, he's at the right club to play offensive football. Now, whatever you think about Arsene Wenger, whether you're Wenger in, Wenger out, he's never been the type of coach to just rely on his defence. Hmm. Mostly because they're generally rubbish. <laughs> but usually, um, you know, he always favours front foot, attacking football, yeah. uh, attractive football, and uh, Aubameyang. He's going to fit right into that. Great deal. So LMAO, obviously, it's great. It's a great little title for him. Yeah. But will they all play together? Do you think, or is there going to be one that's sacrificed? Because that's a well, lot of attacking firepower. But at what expense? He can't play in the Europa. Yes, Aubameyang. but in the league. Do you he, so he can play. He can play in the league. Yeah. I think Lacazette will be the one to lose out because, yeah. you know, I don't think he's on the same level as the other three. No. No. So I think um, he had a great start, didn't he, to the season? And then he well, sort of, did he? Well, he scored worked, a lot of goals. You know, people kind of worked him out nice and early. Um, mm. I still think if he comes good for Arsenal, it's going to take him, you know, another season, maybe another couple of seasons before they see the best of him. Yeah. But um, I would have Aubameyang over Lacazette like any day of the week as my starting centre forward, and then uh, I would have Mkhitaryan and Ansel behind him. Mm. Where are they going to go? Within that structure, I don't know, but Wenger loves attacking football, and he will love having these peak talents. Yeah, yeah. It's good news for Arsenal fans, who obviously would have had a pretty bleak last night in terms of losing to Swansea three-one. I think that's finally killed my prediction that Arsenal are going to win. Not, I think, <laughs> that was I the moment. That, that was the nail in the You were still believing, <laughs> still had faith that they could turn it around. Yeah, and I just thought you a know, miracle run. What yeah. the eight points off fourth now, or something? Yeah, like that? I mean, I thought top four with Aubameyang coming in seemed like a good opportunity. Yeah, well, when you can't beat Swansea, who I, I thought when Carvajal came in, that's them done. They were preparing for the championship. Yeah, because he's not a Premier League manager, really, no. is he? But you uh, know, they seem to have got their act right together. Is that six yeah. points out of six against Liverpool and Arsenal? Six points out two. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Six points out two games, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. beat, was it, that was at home as well, wasn't it, against Liverpool? Yeah. So, uh, the beauty of the Barclays. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to be talking a lot about Arsenal today, because they are probably going to be the protagonists of deadline day, yeah. with obviously everything that's going on. In addition to, uh, you know, Aubameyang, 
uh, coming in. They also... There's yes, Bamiang. Yes, Bamiang. Our Arsenal correspondent, Chris Wheatley, he understands that Meza Ozil is set to sign a new deal. Yeah, great news for them. It is. Maybe yeah. he's being convinced by the presence of uh, Mkhitaryan and uh, Aubameyang yeah. that Arsenal are going places. Yeah. So, you know, how long Wenger will be there? Who knows? Maybe another season after this one. But the, the club is certainly preparing for, for the future. Mm. You know, with Mislin Tat with uh, who's Fami coming in, mm. uh, with Sanetli coming in from, from Barcelona. You know, the back room is being shaken up there mm. and they're sort of decentralising the power uh, away from, from Arsene Wenger. Yeah. Um, and that means that, you know, there's going to be a structure going forward. Uh, the still need players here and there. They need a new goalkeeper. You know, check his pass is best now. I'm sorry. That blunder last night. Not yeah. pretty. And the, pro- and the still need another centre-back. That's crucial for them. Yeah, they can and improve so, all over the pitch, but the attack... Is the attack not, is, is, is in place. And yeah. also, you know, if, if uh, these reports are to be believed, and, and Chris, Chris Wheatley's a, a good man on Arsenal, he knows all his stuff. He does. Uh, then, um, you know, I think it's... it's, it's what, a, what a couple of days that would be for Arsenal. If they get Incredible oh, deadline a new day. contract for Arsenal, that yeah. would be sensational for them. It would. Uh, it's passed for the Arsenal goal. I know it wasn't a great game for Arsenal fans, mm. but it was a beautiful ball. Well, he's, he's the best playmaker in the league. Mm. He's, a, just, he's, he's a wonderful player. And anybody... Who still doesn't read also needs to take those scales from their eyes and, and have a look at this guy because he's he can, magic. It makes up for the fact that he looks so disinterested at points in the game. It's just his, it's like Berbatov, isn't it? He you, you can't take that they aspect love, out of the game. One thing in this country, I'm Irish, so you know I'm not from this country. But one thing in this country they do love is is people who look like they're making an effort. The James Milners. Yeah, they love that. You know, <laughs> like if your shirt is dirty and you're smashing into people all the time, yeah. and you're you know you're sort of spitting out your nose and you're shouting at people, they love all that. Yeah. You know, if you look like you're enjoying your game, <laughs> you know, it's like. Oh, what are you doing? So that's, no. where, that's where all the Urzel grief comes from. Yeah, you know, if you put like your sleeves down over... Wearing some gloves. Yeah, yeah, they don't like any of that. Boo! Yeah, they yeah. don't like any of that. They like you to make it, <laughs> to look like you're making an effort. You reckon it's the right call then, don't you, for Arsenal to keep him on? You're a big fan of Urzel. I'm a huge fan of him, yeah. yeah. And I think it's the right decision for Arsenal yeah. to stay at the club as well. Let us know in the comments section if you're watching on Facebook whether you reckon it was the right move for Urzel to stay or not. And we'll be reading out some of the comments at the end of the show. We're going to stick to Arsenal slightly now. We'll continue talking about one of the players who might leave, though, which is Olivier Giroud. Giroud, yeah. So it seems like, as you mentioned earlier on, the uh, love triangle, the love transfer triangle. Yeah, the menage a trois. The menage a trois of uh, Aubameyang, Giroud and Batshuayi swapping clubs, essentially. Yep. Uh, will be complete today if Chelsea go through with the agreed an £18 million pound fee. Yeah, uh, Chelsea looks fun. cheap in this market, but it's got to be remembered that you know Giroud isn't very good. Yeah, <laughs> he's certainly not as good as Jekyll, who they had their heart set on. Not for yeah, from not what I Dzeko. understand. But he is six foot four, you know, and you can't teach that. You cannot teach the height. No, no, no. no. he's got that innate ability to jump. Yeah, um, but no, like Jekyll clearly was their main target, or was in the last week. I- and but if Giroud goes through, it's not going to happen with Jekyll. Let's no, I mean, he, Giroud seemed like a backup plan when it when it became clear that essentially Jekyll wanted too much money yeah. by the sounds of it because he's 31. Chelsea don't like paying money for 31-year-olds anyway. But when he's asking for the amount he was, they were just like, no, nope, we're done. Back to Crouch, Barnes and Carroll, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. Maybe con- I'd, I'd, Obviously, we don't work with Batshuayi every day, but I think I would be more inclined to try and work with Batshuayi than, than bring it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't like, doesn't like um, him as a player. So Batshuayi against the Dormans. Giroud knows the league. Giroud knows the league really, really well. You know, he does. Yeah, I, I think he could be a decent backup option. I mean, compare it to some of the strikers that Chelsea have been linked with. Like he, he's better than some of them. Do you think he'd be better he's than Falcao was for them? <laughs> I would imagine so. Did you forget the Falcao play for Chelsea? I did slightly. Yeah, he was there for a year, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, with yeah. Mourinho. <laughs> yeah, that was not an impressive year, was yeah. it? Yeah, or Torres. It's, 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 it's two. Uh, I reckon. Um, well, Torres came in for a la- massive fee, didn't he? Yeah. It's a different, you know, it's a schism there because Torres came in, you expect him to be the star. Giroud's coming in, you yeah. expect him to come off the bench and maybe score a couple of goals. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, but I mean, we talk about, uh, you know, Wenger bringing or Arsenal bringing in these players to convince Ozil to stay, bringing in Mkhitaryan, bringing in Aubameyang. We've said already on the show in past iterations throughout the month that Hazard must be looking at the players that are coming into Chelsea's team and thinking, what they, why would I stay? What are they going for here? Yeah, yeah. where Man City wanted me for 100 million, you know, and I can play with Aguero, Sane, Sterling, De Bruyne, probably, probably the best playmaker in the world right now. I said Otto was, so I don't well, know why I'm you're, disagree what you're trying, to, trying, to, trying to make me look bad. <laughs> we can disagree, we can have a healthy disagreement. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the situations where he's clearly not going anywhere this month. But well, Chelsea are going summer, nowhere this month either, are they, really? Not this season, no. I mean, no. They're lucky that Arsenal are bottling it in the league, aren't they, at this point? Oh, but, I, you know, obviously... I. I like He's still said... going to back him to get the top four. <laughs> no, I said they're going to win the league, so well, come on. you've given up on that now, though. Yeah, I know. Aubameyang, come on. You know, 
hit the ground running and maybe, <laughs> maybe my prediction is and back you hope on. City fall apart just don't win another game yeah what there must be about 30 points <laughs> <laughs> a fair amount at least uh, yeah let us know in the comment section what you reckon about Giroud signing we're going to finish well we're going to move on before we get to these comments to a deal that was talked about yesterday in Man City suddenly springing up some interest in Riyad Mahrez yeah uh, Leicester's star player I guess at this point <clears throat> they've got Vardy as well but he's the, certainly the star midfielder yeah he's been brilliant for them he especially has. since uh, knuckled down. In there. he's knuckled down yeah. yeah he tried to get away uh, last summer uh, he you know, no significant bids were, were uh, tabled for him as far as Leicester were concerned. Yeah. There's money on the table, uh, according to Sam Lee, our Man City correspondent, there yes. is money on the table for Mares from Manchester City. But Leicester don't like the money that's on the table at the minute. And yeah, so they bid, Certainly not on deadline day. They bid 60 million yesterday and Leicester wants 70 million and they're refusing to go over 65 by the sounds of it. That's the latest from Sam. Well, look at it this way. Why, why should Leicester sell him for any less? He's, he's a league winner. He was uh, player of the year last year. They can't replace him. They can't replace him. And even if they do have to go into the market today to replace him, well, teams are going to look at them and go, well, you're desperate. So yeah. it's going to be 50 million for Nathan Redmond or yeah. whoever they decide to go for. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but they've got nothing to gain by, by selling him in this window. And, and Mares, if they say, right, give us six months, get us back in the Europa, let's win the FA Cup, something like that, and then you can get your move in the summer to, mm. to a club of your choosing. Because there's no way he's been Manchester City's first choice. Oh, if, no. if, if that criminal challenge that uh, Bennett puts in on Sané on, on Sunday doesn't happen, then mm. Mares doesn't come anywhere near Man City's radar. Yeah. So maybe he has to console himself with that fact and say, you know, I was behind Sanchez, probably behind in the list of priorities, Johnny Evans and Fred and all these other guys. Mm. You know, and it's just that he may be available so Guardiola is interested because after these six or seven weeks when Sané comes back in the team he's not going to I can't see where he's going to line up in that Man City team he won't be a first team will he I mean he's, you essentially if you're Myers you've got a choice of being the star for Leicester yeah. or being a bench warmer well city. the thing is what I will say about City is they did need a for, as far as Guardiola was concerned it, going into January he needed another forward that's why Sanchez was being pursued Jesus was injured and now Sané is injured as well and there's always that danger uh, that they're going to lose one of them to suspension or to injury or whatever so mm. the fact that they need a forward doesn't change but I think maybe with the the alacrity with which, with which they've gone after uh, Mares, uh, mm. it just it, for me as a, as a lesser owner the lesser manager it wouldn't sit well I'd be, I would bat it off straight away and say come back from in the summer if you really want him yeah I mean in City we talk about maybe someone coming up and challenging Man City at the top of the table but it's very unlikely isn't it not this, this season it's not so I season. guess Mares is coming in he would be able to play in the Champions League wouldn't he he's not cup tied or not cup tied yeah so I mean yeah. he would be did well for them in the Champions League last year too yeah they yeah. got to the quarterfinals didn't they yeah they did yeah, yeah. Uh, let it go put them out yeah. yeah yeah so we'll see what happens there uh, I think there's obviously still, what, 12, 11 hours to go until tr deadline day. And yeah, we'll be bringing videos, live videos to you across the day. Yeah. So do stick with us on Facebook. Uh, we're going to read out some of the comments now. Thanks to those of you who have got involved on Facebook. Uh, Henny says, bring in now Simeone from Atletico. Venga out. So he wants Simeone to come in as Arsenal manager. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Simeone's football would make your eyes bleed. It's so negative. You know, it's very different from what Venga wants to play, yeah. isn't it? I know he's done well with them, but the, it, it, comes with, it comes with a caveat. You know, yeah. you have to play like Atletico play in order to get like to, Diego sa Costa to satisfy plays. those conditions. Like yeah. Costa, you know, that yeah. sort of fighting attitude. Yeah. I don't. I, Arsenal need a, a front foot coach to replace Wenger. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Simeone's the man. Who is but he will go. Name? Simeone will be gone in the summer. Yeah. And, and Griezmann. And Griezmann, yeah. I reckon so. But there'll be a number of clubs up, up for grabs in the summer for Simeone. Maybe Inter, which he's always said he wanted to coach. Maybe Chelsea could be up in the summer. Chelsea, yeah, Conte, yeah. obviously a lot of talk about Man United, uh, if you know from Mourinho, chucks his toys out the pram. And... Unlikely at this point, I think. New deal. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the rest of these. You never know with Mourinho, do you? Um, someone said Sanchez is the best. Thank you, TJ. Uh, you don't rate, reckon Sanchez is the best. You He's reckon Aubameyang is the best. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Out of the, uh, what, we're talking about the players that have moved in January? Well, I think he might be referring to, yeah, the best deal of the transfer. Oh, right, no, I'd go Aubameyang. Aubameyang, yeah. best deal of the transfer yeah. end of you. Uh, what about the Louise deal? Thought it was a swap. So we think we brushed we're, on this yesterday. We're dark on this one. At yeah, the it's not a, a uh, information we have. I think it was reported by a couple of papers yesterday that Nizar might... will be all over this. Uh, if so, if anything does happen between yeah. now and the end of the day, you'll hear it from Nizar Kinsler. Yeah. So I mean, David Louise's context here is that obviously he's not playing at the moment for Chelsea. It seems like Conte he's fallen out of favour with Conte, hasn't he? Christensen is uh, playing instead of him, I believe, mm -hmm. at centre back. He's playing instead of Cahill. He's uh, he's quite yeah. He's David Louise really is well the fifth there. choice of the, of the centre backs. After probably being the best centre-back in the world last season. It's yeah, quite yeah. a fall from grace. Yeah, that's, 
Uh, Ozil to Aubameyang is going to be amazing. Aubameyang to net 14 Premier League goals this season. Yeah, I think it could very well be uh, that kind of case. I think he'll hit the ground running. Yeah. But one thing that really annoyed me about Wenger is, you know, you make that big January signing to excite the fans. Mm. And then he puts Mkhitaryan on the bench last night. You know, didn't want to throw him straight in there. Started... I didn't think he would throw him straight no, in No, I knew he wouldn't. But, it's it's you know, such just a Wenger move. To... Yeah, it's a massive Wenger <laughs> move, you know. But he always seems to, to do that. I remember when Kalazanac and Lacazette and these guys come in. Mm. And then first game of the season. And of course, Jack is. Starting. Of course, Jack is starting. <laughs> but you know, the new exciting guys are always left to uh, yeah. always left to kind of linger for a little while. I would have liked to have seen Mkhitaryan from the beginning. Alexis last started night. from the ben- uh, from the uh, first team, didn't he? When they played against Yeovil, yeah, Alexis that's right. Started from the front, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Mourinho took very much an opposite approach to that. Uh, I would too, all yeah, the time. Yeah. Team Mourinho. I'd be Team Jose in, team in that regard. Yeah, get him straight in. Prove yourself. Uh, Giroud is better than Morata, says Pizzola. He's probably uh, a more proven striker in the Premier League. I'm not a huge. Uh, I'm not in love with Morata. He's Murata, not a Murata fan, no. No, I'm not in love with Morata. I like him, but I'm not in love with him. I can't see him standing in front of Morata the entire time. Maybe if Morata doesn't turn. Morata needs to get his act together does, because yeah. if Chelsea are already looking for uh, help for him, yeah. if not quite replacements at this stage, then you know that should that should be sufficient motivation for him to say, "Wow, I need to up my game here. Mm. I don't want to be replaced by Giroud, by Ashley Barnes, by anybody." By Andy Cowell, we'll see. We'll see by if Chelsea Falcao. <laughs> Although Falcao has done quite well since he left. He has yeah. back at Monaco. Yeah, he's. Doing Return to form. All right, so we'll be back with you in a couple of hours. We'll be bringing you lives across the day, so please do stick with us. Watch out for our latest daily transfer show editions. Uh, we're going to finish on just the fact that the majority of you think that Aubameyang is the best deal of the transfer window. Oh, definitely, so yeah. They're Team Pete. Yeah. Team Pete. Team Pete. All right, well, see you soon. Cheers, guys.